what's the focus been this week for you? Because you're trying to build confidence, you're trying to end a, a bad run. So what, what, what is the focus? Is it mental? Is it training routines? What is it? Uh, consistency um, in behaviour, in the way we work, uh, intensity, um, being really competitive with each other in training, and and just helping the players as much as possible, really, for our, from for like a coaching staff point of view. But um, staying on the path that we believe is the right one, and uh, just trying to connect everyone to that and make sure everyone's together. And um, I think the players had two two ways to come into this week. Really, one was to sort of feel sorry for themselves um, and to come in a bit low on energy. Four defeats in a row is not easy. Um, and the other choice was actually come in and just attack everything and, and uh, embrace everything, and they've done that. And I've been really pleased with the work this week. I've, I think we'll really benefit from the time in the training pitch this week. Um, I've loved the mentality of the group. I've really enjoyed this week. I've really, really enjoyed it. And uh, I think we'll come out the other side of it stronger. Um, how do you keep being ambitious in your football while having to end this clean sheet problem you've inherited in a way, because it's now 20 games, which is rare for a club. How, how do you keep the ambition going one way and try and stop it at the other? Yeah, it wasn't rare for a club when I played for him, but um, it is what it is. The situation is what it is. So it's been frustrating, been annoying, it's been painful. Um, but if you keep just talking about the problem and keep just talking about, you know, we have to fix, there's a lot of stuff we need to, to work on and improve. Um, and I feel like we've really sort of narrowed down like laser focus on a few things this week that will really help us I believe so like any any time we play you analyse the game you learn from it then we practice relentlessly and then we'll go and perform and then, and then we'll follow that like process that cycle um, and it's the same it's the same thing so I hope that everyone understands here now players, staff that we are um, going to behave in the same way we're going to work relentlessly to try and improve on what we want and, and to try and tweak when we have to and adapt but I'm really conscious, so I've been through these moments at both my previous clubs, and I'm here now because we stayed on a, a certain path and we had real conviction in what we do, but I'm also really conscious that if it works, I'll be praised for having conviction and staying true to what I really believe in, and if it doesn't, I'll be called a stubborn git. Um, but, and it's such a, such a fine balance. So um, we will stay on a certain path, trying to help deviate a little bit away from it every now and again to get back to where we want to, but never ever like turning around and going the other way or taking a massive uh, diversion about where we want to get to. And um, it's, it's what's got us this far. It's what's brought us to this club. It's what the club has decided with so much change, to, as I said, to, to embark on that journey. And had some really good chats with the owners this week as well um, about how they can help us. And they've been brilliant. And um, I think everyone... I get the feeling everyone here, the club, the staff and the players are so with us. They're so behind what we want to do. They really want it to work. The energy at the place has been great. Um, so different to the energy when we first came in 12 weeks ago. So we will, um, we will continue on that. And um, I've got no doubt and real confidence that, that will, the results will turn around. And you can't just be outcome based. I think if you are, it leads to a lot of pain and uh, a lot of, uh, well, just not a very healthy environment. So we will continue on the work been really aware that we have to win as well of course I know that with the expectation here um, but we have 38 games left and we, we've been a lot of teaming problems a lot of change we now need to find some consistency and rhythm and uh, we'll do that um, what do you say to people that say well Leicester and Leeds haven't got the teething problems mm -hmm. or the suffering like you are the damage done and so on but they went down as well it, it was yeah, something think... worse because they were bottom of the league or what yeah so uh, well it's a, it's a less of a base to build on, they finish bottom. Um, but also it's like, you have to put it in perspective. Um, Leicester done a lot of their work early, and you look at the players they signed as well, very different. So they went for two players who play for England and um, have a huge experience and character. And I'm pretty sure they were signed as much for that as they were for their ability. Um, less change on the pitch in terms of, they, they, until they played against us, they pretty much played the same team for quite a while. We haven't been able to do that. It's not excuses. And then, um, Leeds, again, did a lot of work a bit earlier than us. Um, so it is what it is. We're, we're relying on three or four players to get fit during league matches. So Taylor, Mason, Ryan Fraser, Flynn Downs. Um, so we're paying for that a little bit. It's not an excuse. I don't want to come out. We should, we should still be doing better. But it is, yeah, it's a fact. So we're asking them to get up to speed whilst 
playing, which is not easy. But I do believe after watching Flynn play at the weekend, he's he's there, he's ready. Um, he was outstanding, I thought, against Middlesbrough, the distance he covered, the energy, the aggression. Um, and, and Taylor will be so much better for this week. Mason as well, I know it's been a difficult start for him, but he'll come through that. He's a good character. Um, his character was a big reason why I wanted to take him, and uh, he's been great this week, the way he's responded. And uh, Ryan, Ryan will be great, he's showing it in fits and starts. And it's like when you come back from a long-term injury, you, you really, you come back, the adrenaline's there, you're just desperate, you come back real energy, and then at some point you hit a little bit of a lull. And when you haven't played for a long time, it's similar. And I think he's done that and he's ready to go again now. So this week's been good for a lot of them. Um, so, yeah, now it's time to transfer that onto the pitch. Football has a habit of writing its own stories. And Joel Pirro coming to play against you is one of those. If he scores, people will say, why didn't we sign him? Mm -hmm. Did you want him? Um, he's obviously a very good player. You know how to get the best out of him yourself. So was he a player you wanted? Or was he just that we all put two and two together and presumed you did? Yeah, outstanding player. Um, he, was, he was never a player that was an option for us because of the options that we have up front so uh, would I have wanted him yeah I loved working with him um, great 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 character really top finisher understood and bought into everything we wanted to do um, and yeah we had, a, we had a tough start to life me and Joel and uh, <laughs> when we made it really clear what we expected of him he was amazing for us and um, it's, no, it's no surprise to me that he's, he's one of the best strikers in the championship he's one of the best scorers in the championship it's no surprise he started how he has um, we have people on the pitch who know him very well so they know his game so that will hopefully help us but yeah you know he, he, would he have would he have added to this group and helped us at some point yes was it ever an option no because we've got brilliant options here that we're really happy with um, and we ended up signing one that I think will, will contribute hugely when he's, when he's back fit and just on Leeds then I mean it's interesting perception isn't it because you're perceived to be doing badly they're perceived to be doing well there's three points between yeah. you three points off the playoffs so what, what about the challenge of, of beating how big would it be to beat them and get back on track by beating one of the biggest teams I think the whoever we were playing tomorrow is, a, is an important game for us um, I actually think the size of the game both teams relegated the, the following they'll bring um, I think it's a really it's a good game I think it's a really good game uh, it'll be a good game of football two teams who are, who are trying to play in a fairly similar way I think um, and they, they had a slow start and they've now really got into it we had a good start and have slowed down a little bit So, but we are three points off them it'll be a huge huge day for us if we win um, but we need to see a, a performance that looks more like us we've been slowly building the last two games we should have had more points than we had in the last two games There's no, it's been very little in, in the games um, but because of the moment we're in and the period we're in it's been we're on the wrong side of the results I think when you're when you're playing really well winning games and you don't quite reach the level you still manage to find a win somehow and we haven't done that so um, it's time to bring a level of performance that we haven't for a, for a couple of weeks um, in terms of intensity and aggression and uh, I think um, we'll get more of that tomorrow Thank you. Okay we'll move on for the written section for 10.30 Alfie Arsenal. It's not that you get a full week to work, I suppose, in the championship. And there seems like there is a bit of consistency coming with the starting eleven now. But given you've had a week to work, everybody, you've said about loads of people have responded really well to the last four games. How difficult actually is it to choose the starting eleven that you want this weekend? Yeah, it's been um, it's been interesting because we played eleven eleven with the twenty ones on Monday with the guys who haven't played and they were really outstanding. So um, a few of them were desperate to put themselves into the team for sure. Um, and, and like we have a lot of depth and strength in the squad. And there'll be people that are frustrated they haven't played so much. And some we've had really honest chats with about need to do a little bit more to get into the team. Some understand that the people in their position that they're playing in at the minute are, you know, are showing real signs that they, they can make it their own. So it's, it's football, right? We spend a lot of time with the players who are not playing because they are every bit, if not more important, when you, when you need them, they need to be ready. Every bit of detail, every bit of work they're involved in. Um, and some are going to play a huge part. So Jack Stevens injured at the moment, but still playing a huge part for us. And uh, it's really important that for the cohesion of the group. I feel like they're really coming together, the guys. It's been such a fractured um, group over the last however long, to the point where, you know, last season it was such a divide. Um, and we try to bring them together through through a way of doing things, through having a belief and conviction in something, which is the identity of the team, what it's going to stand for. And I think building an understanding of that all the time, building the work towards that. Um, the rest will be what it will be like choose not to be outcome focused in this job because if you do it will just end up yeah turn into a bit of a robot 
I have to switch off your emotion for you to become like that. And uh, I choose to feel things and choose to care about the players. We all do, and um, we believe that's the right way, and it will come good. I, think I spoke to Phil Parsons this week, um, which was a really interesting chat. Sort of spoke about sort of the financial side of things. And I think mm -hmm. he pointed out that you know, the financial fair play didn't quite allow you to move in the market as you maybe would have wanted. But you brought in a lot of loans, a lot of experience. You've been able to you know, navigate it that way. But both you and you and Jason sort of really happy with what you've done, and then he feels it will definitely come good this season. Yeah, I think so. Within the within the constraints we have, for sure. Um, I think like teams gamble with a financial fair play um, and they might get lucky that season and go back up. If they don't, it leads to a lot of, well, a lot of trouble down the road. Um, and I think the owners have chosen not to gamble with the club and not to do that. I think it's the right thing completely, um, which is why you then have to balance the short term with the long term, right? But I think the business we've done, um, it's been great with what we, what we had. And I think Jason was outstanding during the window. Um, and the ownership, ownership group was so honest with us all the way through um, and it became clearer and clearer what we would have to work with as it went on. But we are paying a little bit for doing a lot late, so um, and I think they understand that as well. And again, that's not a criticism of anyone or an excuse, it's just that's a fact with, with everything that went on. Um, I think you know some players were going to go and then some players went that probably we didn't expect to um, and you don't know what money's going to come in for, for certain players as well. So it was such a difficult window for the club. Um, and as I said to you before, I think it'd be the most difficult window we have to endure. Um, but I think we got through it relatively well. So now just getting everyone up to speed and getting everyone together. And uh, as I said, we, we just haven't had a huge amount of time on a training pitch since since we got everyone together, really. So the Sunderland game is the first game after the window. That went disastrously. And we haven't been able to bounce back quite since then. But everyone went away on international break. Then we come back. We have three games in a week. So it's been a nice week this week to really get together and understand what's really important and what's required to get through this period and um, I'm really confident we will and when we do it will be we'll be so much better for this period so much stronger as I said we've had a bit of short term pain that both clubs have been at because I took over a club in the relegation zone um, as a 33 year old went from a player to a manager in, in the dressing room um, and had the full support of a, a chairman Pete Pete Winkleman who I'll be eternally grateful for he hammered me every day for certain things but he just said I want to bring a way back to the club of doing things and um, even if we get relegated you've got my full support and we managed to get out of it doing things in a certain way and keep building and left the club in a really good place I feel like we did the same at Swansea we so many of the playoff squad left the budget completely different to what it was previously and we left them and I think in a good place people like Joel Perot and young players who could sustain the club which was a big part of our role there very different to the expectation here now we come here and we have to we have to win but also you can't you can't just focus on winning without building anything because then you get to the Premier League and you have nothing to fall back on. Which is why Burnley, I think, will have the, the best chance of staying up this year because they have something that everyone was so strong on and so clear. And it's not criticism of the other two clubs. I think Burnley are really well equipped to... Um, and, and, and they have a strong manager who's not going to change what he believes or what he's, what he's, uh, what he's doing, despite... I uh, listened to radio last week and he's getting criticised for the same thing that got them to the Premier League, which I find really uh, really interesting about this game and crazy. And you get to the Premier League and the fear kicks in, but he, I don't think he has any. He's really secure in himself and what he wants to do. Um, I'm really secure in myself and what I want to do, and we're having a really tough time at the minute. I'm also aware of that, that we need to win, but we're not going to go and drastically change. We'll tweak and we'll, we'll adapt um, and give this club something to fall back on, not just for us, but for the, for the academy, for everything, for, to have a really clear way of, of being. Um, and when people look, they go, OK, that's the... That's the way Southampton do things. That's the way they behave. Because um, I don't think there's been enough of that in the in the last couple of years. How has this week been for Charlie Alcaraz? I know you explained to Adam a few difficulties. Yeah, I didn't explain that very well. I don't think. So when I said about trust, I meant trust to, to deliver what we meant wanted on the pitch at that moment. Um, I actually think Charlie is much better starting games than he's coming on. Uh, and we brought him on recently in games where we're chasing the game, um, and he's not. It's not. We've not been clear enough with him on his role when he comes on to do that. So it's totally my fault. Um, I love Charlie as a player and a boy. I said to you, he's had a difficult time recently. He has. Um, he's a really young man. He's a brilliant young man. He's so willing to learn, to work. Um, I'm really trying to learn Spanish and my broken Spanish is getting there. Um, and we use the doc a lot for, to, to translate. And he's working hard on his English now, really hard. Um, I think he understands the opportunity he has to look really good in this team. Um, 
And I've loved the way he's responding. And we had a chat about the comments on Saturday because I think they were misconstrued a little bit by a few people. And it's probably my fault when after a game and the emotion, I wasn't as clear as I should have been. So I didn't articulate that very well. But I trust him. He's played a lot of minutes for us already. Um, he's really ready to go. He'll be a big player for us. I've said that. Um, and he's such an exciting talent. I just need to find the best way to utilise him and the best way for him to be in the team. And sometimes when you're going through such a tough moment, you don't want to put the young guys in the firing line, but sometimes they're the best ones to actually get through it because um, they're fearless. And I feel, I feel like, well, not fearless, they're able, to, they're able to overcome their fear a bit better than some. And I think Charlie is in that place where if he needs to be on the pitch tomorrow, he will be. And if he is, I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do. So if he gets on at some point, he'll be, uh, he'll be amazing. Just finally for me, is there anything you can say about the fitness of Juan Larios? I know he's sort of on the way back, but mm. is there anything he's changing? Yeah, we had a big setback with Juan, so he's no longer on the way back, unfortunately. So he'll be out for a couple of months still. Um, really innocuous, really frustrating for him. Really devastated for him, really. He's such a brilliant, brilliant lad and uh, he deserves better luck than he's had. So, um, yeah, Juan is, again, rehabbing. Um, something that's frustrating for everyone here. No fault of his, no fault of the medical team. Everyone's done really... Sometimes these things just happen. Um, the amount of work that's gone into him, the amount of care that's gone into him, the, the way he's been slowly reintegrating into the group, he's built him up really slowly. I don't think we could have, between the medical team and ourselves, a lot of conversation. I'm not sure we could have managed the situation or taken it as slow as we have done, any slower than we have done. So it's just one of the things, unfortunately, for Juan. Um, we'll support him. He's a brilliant young man, really, really top young player. He was just starting to really get into the groove and we was really starting to enjoy watching him, such a smooth footballer, um, and so aggressive as well. Um, so it'll be another hurdle for him, another called, another difficult period for him to overcome and we'll support him all the way through. Um, and when he eventually does get to a place where he can contribute, he will hugely. He's a, he's a really, honestly, he's a really outstanding young talent. Um, but we have to be a bit more patient with him and, and take our time and really get to the bottom of, or try to, of what's, um, what's caused this again and, and make sure it doesn't happen again. Cheers. Russell, I just wanted to ask you about Daniel Farker, if I can, because I believe you worked with him at Norwich very briefly. Is there mm -hmm. anything you can kind of, you know, it's a little while ago now, but is there anything you can still take from that? And also, have you taken anything that you learned from him when you were playing under him and your manager? Yeah, I didn't play for him for very long, so uh, he'd done a, an amazing job at Norwich, a really amazing job um, after a tough first season. Um, yeah, he was really clear, really consistent, um, knew exactly what he wanted, really, really promoted young players into the team. Um, and yeah, I, he he done great. He got rid of me, so uh, <laughs> he knew what he was doing. Um, but yeah, he's, he's obviously shown two promotions from this league before. Um, he knows what it takes. I think they've recruited really well. Leeds, you can see they're already starting to look like a team that um, he wants it to be, very similar to his Norwich team. Um, so yeah, he's uh, he's a really proven manager at this level, really good manager. And um, but I just didn't work with him for for very long. Um, so. I couldn't say I'd taken loads of stuff from him, apart from really how consistent he was. And how, even during the difficult few months when I was with them at the start, results-wise, he just stayed really, boom, this is what we're doing. We're going with it. He had incredible support from Stuart Webber and, uh, and the owners there and patience, and it really paid off for them. Um, so, uh, yeah, it will be an interesting game, and um, I'm looking forward to it.